Well, hello there, and welcome to our ninth video tutorial. And today, we're going to be looking at assigning frame sections to your bridge. So, the first thing that you're going to want to do when you're assigning frame sections to the bridge is hopefully you've already imported all of the layers that you want. Now, the next step will be to go ahead and go to the Define tab and select Materials. First, we're going to need to define what kind of material the tubing section will be. Now, there's some existing uh, materials here already, but we're going to add a new material. This will be basically the 4130 or chromoly tubing property. So, it'll be of type steel, and we'll have the default weight per unit volume, it'll be in default units, same modulus if you list, city portions ratio, coefficient of external expansion, and shear modulus. The only things we're going to change are these, and the only impact that they actually have on the model is when we do some of our design checks. So how do we figure out some of these values, the yield stress and the tensile stress? Well, you can just look these up. So if you go to Wikipedia, you can find some of the default properties for 4130 steel, and as you can see here, uh, 4130 has nominally a yield strength in the range of 70,000 to 85,000 PSI, uh, and tensile strength is 85,000 to 110,000 PSI. So I'm going to be using the minimum values in each of these ranges just to be on the more conservative side. So for minimum yield strength, we'll just say 70, and effective yield strength, uh, whatever, I'll just say 70 as well. So likewise, for the tensile strength and effective tensile strength, you can just put 85 in both. Click OK, and now you have your 4130 tubing uh, property. So let's now finally define our section properties. So go to Define, Section Properties, Frame Sections, and here you can see I don't have any properties defined yet. Uh, now you can import new properties uh, based on certain existing .pro files, which are essentially just uh, tubing or uh, standard uh, shape databases. And a lot of these libraries already come with uh, SAP2000, but unfortunately they don't necessarily account for the tubing sizes that we're looking for. So say you wanted to import all of the uh, AISC standard uh, I-beam wide flange sections. You could use one of these files to do so. However, since we're basically uh, using very customized tubings that don't typically show up in civil engineering, we're going to have to create our properties. So go ahead and add a new property. Now we'll have the same uh, kind of uh, material here, steel, and there will be two major section types that we'll be looking at. The first will be pipe, and the second will be tube. So this is just our round tubes, and this is our square tubes. So let's start off with a round tube, just a pipe. Now you can specify a couple of different parameters here. You can name it whatever you like, and you can specify the material and the characteristic dimensions. So, you can actually find some of the basic tubing parameters that are required for these inputs from the Wix uh, Tubing Aircraft and Motorsports website. So, you can go to the website, uh, go to these metal, steel, aluminum, tubing, and sheet tab, and then you'll get to this screen. So the two ones you'll probably want to be looking at are 4130 round tubing and 4130 square tubing. So let's see round tubing first. And so you'll see basically a list. You will see a list. There it is. <laughs> there it is. So uh, you know this pretty much has the full list and it goes on for a couple pages. Uh, it's quite a lot of tubing. Um, now, I have actually gone and turned this into a handy-dandy Excel spreadsheet. So I've pretty much taken all these. I created this last year and kind of just recently updated it. So it should have all the standard uh, circular tubing sections. Those are pipes and tubes as well. Those are the square tubes as well. So very handy. So I'll be referring to this pretty much. But it incorporates the inside diameter, outside diameter, the wall thickness and uh, yeah so hopefully this will be of use to you uh, if you decide to uh, create your own tubing sections as we will be doing in this lesson 
So let's create uh, the absolute smallest here that I have that Wix provides at least. This is the 3 16 uh, diameter by 035 wall thickness. So let's just copy the name over here just to be consistent. So all our naming conventions will be the same. Let's change our material property to 4130, what we've already defined. The outside diameter will be 3 16 but notice when I try to do it, well done, oh dear, 3 16 oh no, so it gives an error. Basically what it means is you have to define one of your other limiting dimensions first. It wants us to specify wall thickness first. So don't worry if SAP starts to give you a little bit of a, a whining once it uh, encounters these problems. So try to specify your wall thicknesses first. So our wall thickness will be 035, 0 0.035, and our outside diameter will be 3 16 as we intended. And there it is. So let's click OK to apply that. Click OK to accept. And now we're ready to just use it. So let's go ahead and go to, uh, well, first, actually, we have to select the two wings that we want to use. So if you remember from the last lesson, go ahead and, and do your control G to select which particular tubing size uh, or group that you want to specify the tubing size for. I'm going to select webbing here, and I'm going to do assign frame frame sections. And now you can see I already have my auto populated list uh, with this particular tubing size. Uh, I will apply it, and bam! So now there's a whole bunch of, uh, well, technically everything's been given the same tubing size because effectively we haven't defined any other tubing sizes. So how can you check that this is right visually? Well, there's a special little view command that you can do to draw the whole bridge in quote unquote extrude view. So you can do control W and it'll bring up this nice display tab. So when you click on Extrude View and push, press Apply, you can see that now all the tubings are given their relative characteristic dimensions. And as I said, everything has pretty much been given just this absolute smallest tubing size, just because that's the only thing we've defined so far. Now you can do the same thing with your other tubing sizes. In fact, let's go ahead and define a new frame section property. But this time, let's make it a tube. And uh, let's select, oh, I don't know, how about the biggest square tubing size? So this one at the very bottom. So we'll copy the name in. Oops. Uh, we'll make it 4130. Let's specify our thickness first. Our thickness is 0 0.058. 0 0.058. Copy that down. And the side length is 1.125. So 1.125. And there you have it. Bam! We have our square tubing section applied. Now let's go ahead and select, oh, I don't know, what are we going to apply this to? Let's do decking. That seems a likely candidate. Say decking. And instead of doing assign frame, frame sections this time, I'm going to use a little bit of a shortcut. I'm going to hold down the Alt key. And as you can see now, actually, I have all these uh, things showing up underneath uh, my name's in the up, uppermost, uh, whatever this thing is, the toolbar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now it has an underscore under A. So if I hold down Alt and press A, now I've opened up a little kind of submenu. Uh, so doing that again, you can hold down Alt, press A, and now you can just let go of the Alt key. Press the F key to go to frame, as you can see it's underlined. And then press S, because you can see that frame sections, the S is underlined. So there you go. And putting it all together really speedily, AFS. You can bring up the frame properties tab really, really quickly. So go to assign your square tubing section. And there you have it. Oh, wow, it's so huge. But you know, this is the nice thing about extrude view. It's so you can tell that you're applying it right. Now, uh, it might seem a little wonky. Oh, well, why do I have to do those sh keyboard shortcuts? Why can't I just go through the menus? But if you're going to be applying a bunch of different tubing section sizes to the bridge, uh, if you have a lot of diversity in what the tubing sizes are, 
having to click through the menu can be very, very tedious. So knowing the shortcuts can save you a lot of time. Uh, well, I think that's more or less it, what I wanted to cover this lesson. I'll go ahead and finish up uh, adding in some characteristic uh, tubing sizes to this file and then upload it to the Dropbox so you can take a look at what the finished result looks like. Uh, but until next time, I uh, wish you well in your endeavors and hopefully I can get to my cam studio. There it is. All right. I'll see you guys later. Bye.